Hi there guys, I'm Chris Bowden with the Geek Group. We're hanging out here, bored, hacking, playing with stuff, and we had a bunch of hard drives laying around. We thought, hey, we gotta make a video on the classic thing of how to make a hard drive play music. So here's a hard drive, standard old IDE hard drive. This one's like 200 meg. And you can get fun with these. You can actually make one of these into a really terrible speaker. And it's fun, it's, it's dumb, it's stupid, but it's fun. And you get to learn some basic electronics along the way. So here's how to do it. You take a hard drive, and take all the screws off the top. Now understand, the second you open this up, it's dead. This will never work as a hard drive again. So only do this with junk ones. And it will work with dead hard drives. If you have a hard drive that's like making the bang, 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 you know, clicky, bad death noise, um, first, bring your computer to our shop and let, it, let us fix it for you. And second, keep your old dead hard drive, and we'll show you how to do this. You take all the screws out of the top, uh, make sure to look under the stickers, like peel off the stickers or just feel around with your fingernail, you can feel where there's screws under there, but they often hide screws under stickers. So get all the screws off the top, and then take all the screws off the bottom. On the bottom you'll find a circuit board, which will look like this. And this is the logic board of the drive. So you want to take the board off, and if you're really lucky, now there, this varies manufacturer to manufacturer, on the bottom of the board, some of them just have a cable that goes off and, and disappears inside the box of the drive. Some have little contact feet like this that are totally flat and they'll just be little shiny feet. Some have a little header and it'll be a black thing that actually sticks up from the drive about a quarter inch and it'll be about inch, inch and quarter long. That's the best. If you find one of these, you really lucked out because it makes it easy to do. And you don't need this part, throw that away. Inside your drive, you will find a big round thing. This is the platen. These are actually aluminum discs that are coated in iron oxide. And this is where the data is actually stored, is on, on the hard drive platens. Now the data gets there from this part. These are the heads. And these will be sitting like that on a little bearing thing. And they'll be off on it. It'll look like a record player inside. Now the heads are junk, because the minute you open it up, you just destroyed all that. But on the other end of the, the head assembly, which is called an armature, is a little loop of wire, and this is a voice coil, is what they refer to it as. And this sits inside some little magnets, usually there's two or four of them, and the magnets will look like this, and it'll be in a little cage, and it'll be on a really good bearing. Now, you want to keep the magnets in there, because it won't work without them, and you want to keep the armature in there, so leave all this stuff inside. Now, connected to the armature will be a little flat cable thing, like this, and if you look at it closely, you'll see it's, it's translucent, and I don't know if that's going to show up on camera, but this is, it's a brown translucent thing, and you'll see lines inside, and those lines are actually wires. Follow it all the way down to the head, and on, on the head side, all the wires will, it, all the wires inside will connect to solder points, which will go out to things on the heads, except for two. There's always two wires that are left alone. Those two wires will loop back, and they connect here to the voice coil. You can see the, the other end right here is the solder points. And then you just follow them all the way up the cable and around. There's usually a chip here. I have no idea what the chip does, but it's something very important. The, the wires that go to the motor won't go to the chip. They'll usually go around the chip or whatever. And they come out on the other end, and they'll show up usually on one end or, or the other. There'll be uh, usually it's a ground and then the first two. And that's the wires to your thing. Those are the wires you want to connect your amplifier to. Now, you need a speaker level output. So if you just hook this to like a, a headphone in on your laptop or something like that, it won't work. It probably won't even work at all. And if it does, it'll be so quiet you can barely hear it. You need an amplifier. So this will work. This, we're using this giant Marantz thing. Um, but pretty much any generic amp, you only need a couple watts. The more you have, the better. If you're overdriving this, it'll get hot. So if it starts getting really hot, you know you're pumping too much power into it. This is probably not very healthy for your amplifier. The actual running of it isn't that big a deal, but the finding it and probing it out can mess with your amp. So use a decent amp that you know has the protection circuitry that it won't kill it, or just use a really old amp that you don't care about. This amp has some really good protection circuitry, so we're not worried. So what you do is, with, this is why the, the ones with headers make it really easy, because the header ones come up to pins, and you have a, a male pin header, and it's really easy. You can get these at Radio Shack, little test lead clip things here. There's a little video for you. See? And these are really easy to connect right onto the pins. And then you can leave it alone and you don't have to hold the wire. If you just have the flat thing though, a couple alligator clips and just trim it off with a pair of scissors so that you've got the flat contact points and alligator clips will grab those really easy. But if you hook it all up, get a little radio going. We hooked it up to the rocker because this is Kalamazoo. And 
you can hear that. Now that's that's really quiet, so I'm gonna give it a little kick. It's gonna sound terrible. But you can see it starts jumping around, so I'm gonna hold that down. There. We are now playing music. We got Ozzy. Yeah! <laughs> so here. Now if you let go, it'll really thrash around. So we've got, we got Ozzy playing on a hard drive. And it sounds terrible. It's, it's really bad audio. But experiment with it. <laughs> so we'll turn that down a bit. Now, if, if experiment with it in different ways. Different levels will work better. Doing things like holding this off on one end will make it sound different. Not always better, but different. And doing things like super, using a caulk or super glue and att attaching this to a large resonant thing, like a, a big sheet of wood or something, works really well. If you just simply press one of these up against a wall, it you get all kinds of low-end noise at that point. Because this works, you're just you're vibrating a voice coil. It works just like a regular speaker does, except it's it's twisting instead of pushing in and out. So yeah, it's cool. It's fun. It's hacking a hard drive. And we've done it to like three different drives here a day, just playing around, getting set up for this. Um, every single drive I picked up worked just fine. Different connection methods on different ones. This one, I cut the cable down to just the two contacts I needed, and it worked great. Uh, this one, I really had to butcher into it, and I had to separate out. It was the second and third on this one. And on this one, on the header, it was the sixth pair of pins down from the end. So it's, it's all over the place. But there wasn't a single one of these that took me more than five minutes to put together and figure out. So it's really not hard to do. But yeah, just have fun. You don't need any special tools, just screwdrivers. The only thing I needed that was at all unusual was I needed some Torx screwdrivers. But in a pinch, you can do it with you know the properly applied kitchen knife or something. I've done this you know a million times without any real tools. But yeah, that's how to get music out of a hard drive. And when you're done, you get an aluminum box, a circuit card, some platens to play with, a really nifty motor in here. Uh, the spindle motor is pretty cool. Some magnets to put on the fridge or, I don't know, feed to the cat. Because cats like magnets. They're healthy. Really. Totally. So yeah, that's the basics of it. You guys have fun. I'm Chris Bowden with The Geek Group. And I'll see you next time.